Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from publishers in Europe. The book has got the title Fair and Just Solutions. It's got a subtitle, we'll have a look at the book in a minute. The subtitle is Alternatives to Litigation in Nazi Looted Art Disputes, Status Quo and New Developments. It's been edited by Evelyn Kampfens and it's published by Eleven International Publishing. My wife Elizabeth and I have discussed this book, which I'll show you in a moment, and we've given it the title Revealed, the current state of play on the legal problems surrounding the restitution of Nazi looted art. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. Here is the book got a very nice cover at the front. Um, you can see the title and it's 11 publishing. There's the spine and then there is the back of the book with some detail about what's actually in it. Now inside you've got on the inside cover a little bit of information that explains the actual um, painting at the front. It's uh, Liviette, uh, Liviette, if I can pronounce it that way, the drawing that serves as the background of the cover by Vincent van Gogh. Now, the, at the front of the book, you have a very standard front page there. Then you have the table of contents. You can see how they are structured. It's an edited book, so you've got a number of people who've contributed to the work. There are some more uh, contents there. There are um, 14 um, appendices and 11 main chapters. You can see the 11 chapters there and then the appendices there. And if we get into the book itself, there's a very moving forward, I'll mention that in a moment, uh, which has been written explaining the current position. This is by Jet Buzzmaker. There's the rest of his um, forward. Then there's a preface explaining again some of the problems. And then you've got a very useful set of abbreviations because again there are a lot of people involved in trying to sort some of the problems out from the second war there's the introduction there which is by the editor then we get into the book itself there is a lot of footnoting which is extremely helpful there is paragraph numbering at the side so you can find things pretty easily now at the back of the book you've got a list right at the end of the photo credits we'll have a look at some of the photographs in a minute that's right at the back of the book then you have a note about the various authors and then you have, before that, you have a short index which you can see there. And then before that you then get to the uh, various uh, appendices which are listed there. And there are a very substantial number of appendices and they actually start just, uh, they start immediately after the colour plate section which is a very large number of, of colour pictures uh, concerning some of the various artworks that we are referring to. It's too, there are too many for me to go through in detail, but I do want you to get a feel for what in fact it, this is all about. Um, let's just show some more there. Now that's basically the, how the book is structured. We've also got other pictures because there's been a huge amount of work which has gone into the um, in investigating what has actually happened. And again, you can see footnotes. Even has done a very good job indeed with this difficult subject. Before I start, I'll say one thing, and that is for people of my generation born just after the war, I find it amazing that I'm even having to talk about this today when I would have thought, like many of my generation and the ones I've taught, the succeeding two or three generations, that we would not be talking about this because those pieces of, of equipment, if you like, the art uh, works, whatever type of work it was, we thought probably should have been returned to their rightful owners if they could be traced. That hasn't happened. That is one of the reasons why this book is so important and I hope it will awaken um, people across the world about what has actually gone on. There are still a lot of people who have probably very little idea about what the Second World War was really uh, about and who was involved in it and what the Nazis did. So this is what we say about the book because 
when I was born and brought up, there were all sorts of rumours about what the Nazis had plundered. Lots of films had been made and so on. This is what we say, though. Nazi gold, Nazi looted art, the wholesale plunder and desecration of property, as well as the murder of millions during World War II, has left a legacy of well-nigh insoluble legal issues and conundrums for the generations born since the official end of the conflict in 1945. And I'm recording this just before the 70th anniversary of the end of the war. And I would also point out that the problems concerning the looting of these properties, um, whilst I've suggested it might be insoluble, I don't think it is if there is the right political will. And this book, I hope, is the forerunner of raising awareness of what has happened. It will be a long process and many people will not, the families involved who've suffered, will not necessarily get um, the remedies they want initially, but at least we've got to start things going again. The looting by Nazi Germany of cultural property, including works of art, across Europe during that conflict and even before, has certainly created a huge body of subject matter and storylines for many a film made since the war, something like The Train, for instance. Many a work of fiction, there are plenty of those, and more importantly, many alerted analysis, uh, learned analysis of the historical realities, moral and legal, of the Nazi era. I'm not talking here about Elgin marbles. I'm not talking about any of the older stuff. I'm talking specifically about what happened between 1939 and 45, and the fact that restitution still has not taken place. Much of the documentary evidence surrounding these crimes, and there were millions of them, it referred to or summarised in what is an important book from Eleven uh, Publishing. They're based in The Hague and it's been ably edited by Evelyn uh, Kampfens, who has obviously brought a number of, of very knowledgeable people uh, in to assist as contributors to the work. The basic problem centres on the matter of restoring literally tonnes of treasured properties to their rightful owners either to the victims themselves or, as their numbers are fast diminishing, to their heirs. But to what extent has justice actually been done in the past? And can fair and just solutions be implemented in the future? This book provides some of the answers, but certainly not all of them. The Fair and Just Solutions, which is the title, refers to the standards or principles established as the basis for fair and just assessment of claims by the owners of looted art, as formulated by the Washington Principles of 1998, which were endorsed by 44 governments participating in the 1998 Washington Conference on Holocaust-era assets. These principles are reproduced in one of the book's 14 appendices. They're at the back behind the uh, main photographs. Um, they also present the major international initiatives in this area from 1943 to 2009. With its self-explanatory subtitle, Alternatives to Litigation in Nazi Looted Art Disputes, Status Quo and New Developments, the book is the result of a conference of the same name created under the auspices of the Dutch Restitutions Committee and held in 2012 at the Peace Palace in The Hague to discuss the vexed question of Nazi looted art. And I'll say again, why are we even here? This should have been dealt with decades ago, but it hasn't. Editor Evelyn Kampfens is, note, the director of the Bureau of Restitution's Committee, a fact which enhances the book's authority, authenticity and fascination for me historically, for people of my generation and people of my parents' generation who fought in the war and so forth. And for those of us who are only vaguely familiar with the enormity and scope of this subject, this book provides much information and detail. And for the most part, the book contains papers submitted to the conference by leading experts in this field and also features three interviews with actual claimants willing to share their experiences. The authoritative and very moving forward, which was written by Jet 
Brussmaker, the Dutch Minister of Education, Culture and Science, is well worth reading. Let me conclude by saying the conference and the book are welcome and timely initiatives which have shone the light of logic and informed opinion into this complex and murky subject. It's useful to have a Dutch perspective on this ongoing international problem because Holland was one of the European countries that suffered the most under Nazi occupation. Anyone interested in or professionally involved in any issue relating to Nazi looted art should acquire a copy of this book. And I would go further than that and say that this is probably the tip of the iceberg when you think of what treasures are held in some museums, and I'm not going to start naming them, like all the countries, but the concern I have is that there have probably been many, many cover-ups, a very large amount of corruption, but I do think that if we can get some restitution and identify some of the very important works of art, it will assist those relatives of the people who suffered under the Nazi tyranny. Now this is the book again, Vincent's lovely uh, pen. You can't see much of it, but I'll show you the whole of it there. That's the book. Just opening it in the middle. This is a view on just and fair solutions from the United States. And again, that's been written by Douglas Davidson. And it's setting out again uh, what some of the problems are. And in fact, he mentions things like stalemate. And there have been, I'm aware of some of the major problems, the cover-ups and the fact that even in 2015, we are finding things that we didn't know existed. And I'm sure there's a lot more to be found. These are the names of the uh, authors. Norman Palmer is, is among them. And then you've got various other people there. There's the index as well. And as I say, you've got some very interesting pictures. It's a very good book. I'd like to thank Evelyn and uh, Levin Publishing very much for producing this work. I think it's a very important uh, step in the right direction and good luck to all concerned in trying to get back the property that was wrongfully taken. By the way, remember one thing. Hitler murdered a lot of people with his henchmen, but he also wanted to get his hands on everybody's property, both the land and the artworks and so forth. We can do something to restore what was wrong in the first place. Thank you very much. Do read the book. Bye-bye.